Hey everybody and welcome to this week's Design Cinema. This is Fein Zhu speaking and uh, it's another busy week for me so uh, another quick tutorial. This is actually something I have drawn uh, a few months ago actually, a while back for our students here um, in the full-time diploma course. Um, since a lot of you want to see some character stuff, well here's another one right, you guys want to see vehicles we did last week, uh, now it's character stuff. Um, now this process many of you have seen probably before, especially uh, on the Noman DVD that we released uh, oh man, probably seven years ago, uh, the, the robot sketching one. So this is quite similar, except we're going to take it a little bit further than just a standard black silhouette. Um, I generally don't like to have stuff that's just completely pure black because it's hard to see the design. Uh, it works quite well for characters, this method, but sometimes for vehicles and uh, products or anything uh, that requires a lot of functionality, it's a little hard to use. But for characters, this is a great technique, and you're seeing it being used right here. Um, Again, it's a pretty, quite common way of doing stuff because in design, especially in entertainment, the silhouette is very, very important uh, on games especially because the audience have to, for example, you're making a first-person shooter, um, you have to know what you are looking at within a fraction of a second. You know, is it a bad guy? Is it a good guy? Is that a monster? Is that a you know, whatever, right? The audience has to recognize it really quick. And same in films as well, because in typical shot in a movie lasts for less than a few seconds long, and the audience needs to know, what am I looking at? Which direction is it going? What's, it, what's, what's happening, right? All those things need to um, uh, take place. So therefore, a silhouette has to be very, very strong. And that's why this method came about uh, a few years ago that, that is now very, very popular among uh, conceptual artists. Um, so the spec here was to design a monster. Now, that's how I started the class. Let's use silhouettes and design a monster. And the way I like to do these is to keep every single design very, very different from one another. Um, I don't like to I don't like to work the, I guess, the evolutionary way, which is you draw one drawing, you modify slightly, you got another silhouette, then you modify slightly, you have another one. And you end up with, say, 20 or 30 designs are sort of almost the same thing. Uh, whereas in my, on my first pass of a of a design, I want every single silhouette to be completely different from the other uh, in terms of shape, uh, the overall value the volume it takes up, everything. Uh, so this way, it gives the clients a a lot of choices, and then you can start combining stuff. Like I, I like silhouette number three, but I like the head from silhouette number four. Can we put those two together? You see, it opens up conversation versus uh, uh, ever evolving uh, version where you have twenty silhouettes, but each time they change about ten percent. Uh, it's sometimes that makes it almost too hard for a client to decide because maybe they're all okay, right? But there's no other variations to choose from. They're all sort of the same same type of thing. It's kind of like um, you know the difference between a gorilla and a chimpanzee. They're, they're quite different, uh, but silhouette-wise, to a client, they might look exactly the same. Especially someone who don't come from a design uh, point of view, right? Uh, even though one's much bigger and girthier, but they're still very bipedal and humanoid. Uh, so in this case, let's try to make everything very very dramatically different for the first pass. And once the general direction is chosen, we could then refine. So the technical part here, all this is done in Photoshop, uh, no painter this time. And sometimes I even sketch out little drawings you can see here and use that drawing to fill in the silhouette uh, versus starting from pure black uh, of anything. Right? And also for this, for this demo, we're, we're going to render these all up. Uh, none of these are going to be finished in a solid black state. They're all going to have value so we can see the actual details on them, even for a silhouette. So I rarely uh, turn in pure silhouettes for my client work. Uh, I think maybe just once or twice, that's it. Everything is always presented uh, with at least some value. So you can see um, what the insides, I guess, quote unquote, are made out of. All right. So here we are, we have like a bird guy, we have like a scorpion looking guy, all sorts of different people. Because the spec here is just calling for generic monsters, you know, that, that you could place into a video game. So maybe this is some kind of a fantasy um, RPG or something like that. And those kind of games typically want many different kind of creatures as possible. And of course, silhouette being remotely, uh, you know, dramatic, dramatically apart uh, from each other. So I'm going to do six designs here. And then once we have the six, we'll then go back and clean them up and add detail. So you can see, uh, before starting these, always make some notes here ahead. You know, what, what do you want to approach? What kind of design are you trying to get at? So for example, this one, let's make a guy that's really, really strong. And then we have one that, for example, that's like bird. We have one that can walk around. So all these kind of different functionalities, not just in shape, but also how they, uh, how they work, all right? And just using the round brushes. At this stage, I'm keeping the resolution very, very low. I'll probably increase it. Uh, you can see here, I increase the resolution just to place these guys in a nice, uh, uh, composition before we commit to the uh, actual drawing themselves. And you can see here, with silhouettes are great because you can manipulate them. I used a skew tool and made that guy from a short guy into a very, very tall guy and skinny, 
right? And I also move these guys around. So compositionally, they look good. For example, one guy looks to the left, like one guy looks to the right. These are little tiny things that make your page look very, very balanced. And that's what I'm doing with these silhouettes here. Right, giving these guys little weapons, so that way they can also attack the player back. All these are uh, opportunities for um, design, because even the weapons you do, they become part of the um, overall design package. So you can move the weapon, for example, maybe the clients don't like the silhouette of the creature, but they do like the weapon. So they say, hey, maybe we put this weapon onto this guy. Right. So and now I'm going to do some layer grouping. I'm going to group each, each um, individual silhouette into his own little layer group, so then we could draw on top. I'm adding a little drop shadow to ground these guys so they don't float off the page. And very quick, you know, this whole process took, um, I think, the whole entire thing, probably about an hour or so to do. Uh, and this is while teaching. So uh, without without talking or anything like that, these, this process is very quick, and that's why the industry uses it. It's a very, very good way to generate ideas. Right? And it also results in very good happy accidents, meaning that when you start it, you might not even have a very clear idea where you're going. But because of silhouette, your eyes start to see shapes. And it's, you know, the human eye is very good at seeing faces, for example. Um, so you start seeing you know, these kind of creatures emerge from a blob of uh, paint, essentially. So here I grab the silhouette and just start painting the inside. Right? I find this is very helpful, and especially if you watch my previous tutorials. And you notice I mentioned being uh, very useful during the production pipeline uh, is an essential skill for professionals. So even though these silhouettes are meant to be uh, purely um, just a early, very early stage conceptual drawing, by filling in this part here, if we're ever under a tight deadline, this silhouette could be used directly in production. You know, you don't need, even need to do a second drawing. Uh, a talented 3D artist could take this and start modeling it, right? But if you leave it completely black, uh, unless they're very good designers themselves, a 3D artist that is, they're going to have no idea what you're trying to do here. They just see a black shape. They have no idea, is it facing forward? Is it facing backwards, right? Because silhouettes, you can't tell um, direction from them. They, they go either way, right? It's a shadow, basically, right? So by doing this, you can see what's, what the forms are actually made out of within this creature. Uh, so it's useful in production, right? So that's generally like the way I like to work for everything I approach is, is it usable? Anytime we stop it, is it usable, right? So, and this is fast. This process here is just filling in some basic forms. We're not rendering these, we're not texturing them. We're just keeping it very, very basic. You know, of course, of, uh, perspective is being used here, right? Creatures, just like objects, all are made out of basic forms and basic forms therefore lie in 3D space and 3D space is what perspective is all about. So. This guy here is kind of like a fat little dude floating on a very skinny body. You know, just trying to make some cool little, little silhouettes, a little different you know, creatures that we haven't seen before. Bring something new to the table, I guess. And all done in black and white, so we don't have to worry about color. Although I will add some color to this piece towards the end of it, just to extract um, some, uh, I guess, level of read. You guys will see that I like the number three a lot for design. So in this case, we have six, which is a multiple of three. And then later, I'll also select three that are my favorites to, to bring some values to. So when the viewers look at this, they don't see, oh, six drawings. You know, you be, you know, a lot of clients, they don't come from design background. If you show them too many things, they're all uncontrolled, meaning that each, every single one is done in the exact same way. Even though you might think you've done a lot, to the client, it's overwhelming. It's almost like becomes wallpaper, I, I guess we call it, because it starts to look the same. For a non-designer, you got to think. They, they don't know what they're looking at. They're seeing, looking at cool stuff, but when you have too much of something, it's always confusing. It's like, okay, I don't even know what I want anymore. You know, They all look pretty cool. Or, uh, what should I do now? What you want to do is direct their eye. So you have six of them. You want to extract it out. So there's a pattern to the way they look at your presentation that you could control where they look first, where they look second, where they look third. This way, they have a flow when they look at your work. And therefore, it's less intimidating, and it also opens up a ton of dialogue for the clients to start thinking about design and giving feedback. Okay, All this kind of stuff, a lot of it is psychological. But you, as a designer, should be able to uh, control every flow and every speed or the direction that a painting or a drawing or a design should be read by the client. So. In this case, I'm just going back, same technique as the previous one, taking a silhouette, adding to it, adding some detail, um, define the face a little bit. 